Hi there. My name is JD Fox, and I'm here with another geeky thought for your consideration. Um, this one involving um, potato chips, or rather, that will be that catalyst um, for our thinking today. Um, what I have here is a bag of Lay's um, potato chips. You may have seen um, in the supermarket if you don't live in a cave, because they're a pretty um, big brand. And it even says there, Lay's brand on it. Now, of course, it's rolled up to like Frito Lay and conglomerate and, and all that. But the point is, there's something really um, kind of interesting missing um, from this packaging that I noticed. Um, if you look at it, it says Lay's brand, classic, has the best by date, and all the typical stuff. But nowhere on it does it say potato chips. Now, you may seem to think, well, that's pretty obvious because you have little diagram pictures of the chips here and what I guess is a potato that's kind of a funny looking potato actually but um, a potato here and that'd be enough for people to know but I'm wondering why people would necessarily know that or that it's you know coked and salty and all all that stuff um, the point is if you go to a store typically they tell you um, what it is underneath the um, product brand name and you know even some of the more common products that I have in the cabinet say that like um, enriched bread um, I have a bottle of Heinz tomato ketchup and it says that tomato ketchup and I didn't really realize there was other types of ketchup I think that ketchup would kind of sum it up but it does say tomato ketchup um, there's Coop's mustard it does say original yellow but also says mustard in there again letting me know specifically what it is have you ever been to a store and you're not sure about a product and you're kind of reading the description and trying to figure out if you want it, like it or not, and you're, it's helpful when it tells you what it is. But I guess with Lay's, since they're so big, number one, I don't think it's just because they have a picture of the potato on the box, excuse me, on the bag. I think it's because the company is so big and so popular and so commonplace that they don't need to really specify that it's a potato chip. That most people, when they see the bag, they don't even think or hesitate. They just grab it, name brand, known quantity, and all that. As opposed to if you're a startup company that maybe people aren't quite familiar with your product, you might have to specify it um, more clearly. But that got me thinking about assumptions that we make um, with things that we interact with and words in particular. Well, you know, this, this view of chips in the bag and the assumption of what's inside is only common to us because that's how what our cultural um, experience is like. We're so familiar with the idea of a bag of potato chips that seeing one shaped like this with a picture on it doesn't strike us as unusual. Well, let's let's take it and go a little bit away from that and say something else and say it another way. What if I was writing and I mentioned a man sitting down to a hamburger and uh, order of fries, or we could say potato chips since we are talking about potato chips. You'd probably read that without any um, pausing too much. Just it would be added to your understanding of the scene that I'm describing but you wouldn't have any other further thoughts really on it like oh what's this mean or draw any greater significance but what if I instead I said something like the man cut off a piece of cow brain and put it between two slices of bagel and had a side of zucchini strips that might make you pause just a little bit wondering more about this um, character and you know because it would seem kind of strange but why and I, I mean this is a serious philosophical question why would that strike you as strange because we're still talking about edible cow part put between two pieces of bread to make a sandwich which a bagel especially when it's one on top of another is a sandwich and with a side so what is the difference? And of course you're going to say, well, there's lots of differences. But then and you'll maybe even enumerate some. But the point is, from a logical standpoint, from if our brains were working on just a totally computerized um, rhythm, algorithm, 
there would be not a whole lot of distinction. You have edible parts that provide sustenance, man is eating it. The end. But we do not process things in such a manner. And so when we write, part of what we do when we write is we have to be aware of when we are going with cultural expectations and when we are going against um, them that maybe require a little bit of explanation or maybe that we're intentionally um, trying to go against them. I mean, it really strikes me when I write how little is about the words themselves and really what kind of importance the reader is going to put onto those words, what kind of Im impact the reader, not you, not you as a writer, are going to bring out, but what is actually the reader is going to actually thrust upon um, the words themselves by their very experience, by their very history. Indeed, if we didn't have a cultural history together, there would be no writing that would work. You just would not have that kind of emotional impact or resonance. We um, need that shared understanding that we can work with or against to draw out emotions in the reader. I remember a, a book um, with a somewhat pompous um, title called Cultural Literacy. And I think there's some validity to that. Um, all writing kind of assumes some kind of understanding, some kind of previous knowledge. There is no such thing as just words on a page. There's no such thing as just facts. The whole just the facts is ludicrous. Everything depends on what we impart into the words that we read. Anyway, that's my geeky thought for the day, and I hope you enjoy some chips, whether or not they have the named potato chips on them or not. Thank you. Oh, and more can be found at my website, jdfoxpresents.com. Have a great day.